This programme is powered by Hankook Tyres, autosportinsurance.com and Magla, create your own digital magazine. Welcome to the Supercar Challenge powered by Hankook, this time from scorching Zolder in the north of Belgium. With temperatures nudging 30 degrees, drivers had to keep their cars in prime condition. Not an easy task on this four kilometer circuit where the walls are close, the curbs are treacherous and the three chicanes really punish the brakes. In this show we'll report on both one hour races for the GT, Supersport 1 and 2 and Sport classes, but we start with the GT and Prototype Challenge. Zolder is Deldish Racing's home track. The multiple and reigning CN class champions couldn't make it to the opener at Spa, but they're back to defend their title. And they've chosen a new weapon, the Norma M20 FC Turbo. They claim pole position, but is that due to the new car or to their track knowledge? I know the track by heart, said Tim Yosem, but that's true of most tracks we visit. The fun is really to keep improving, challenging yourself to set faster lap times, and of course to beat the others. It may not be a huge starting grid, but it is competitive. Second in qualifying, LMP3 drivers Jean-Marc Ubrecken and Jean-Pierre Lecoeur. Their Ginetta G57 has a 580 horsepower V8, but it weighs 900 kilos. It'll be vital to manage the tyres properly, with track temperatures quickly rising above 40 degrees. The heat also gave problems for our third fastest qualifiers. VR Racing's Alan Berg and Tim Gray had overheating issues in the engine bay. They continued into the first race, where they did only three laps. In Super GT, Hank Tace has pole. He returns with the powerful Pumax RT. Its 6.7 litre V8 produces 600 horsepower, the most powerful car in the field, but with lots of weight and relatively little downforce, it won't be a simple job for the 73-year-old who starts fourth on the grid. One spot further back is our Dutch-Spanish combination, Matthias Becker and Javier Ubran Pardo. Their LMP3 Ligier JSP3 is second in class. With 420 horsepower and 900 kilos, they too will have to work hard in these temperatures. Germany's Max Ashcroft, 100th of a second slower, starts six with his Praga R1 Turbo. With 380 horsepower and 592 kilos, it's one of the fastest cars in the field. Newcomer Roman Crummins is fourth in CN. He comes from Australia, two seconds slower than Ashoff in qualifying. He's new to Zolder. He starts on the fourth row with his lightweight Wolf GB08. It boasts only 260 horsepower, but it weighs just 540 kilos, one of the lightest cars in the field, which will have its benefits. 60 minute race one with three cars starting from the pit lane because of problems. Tim Yosen took the lead early on, ahead of Jean-Pierre Lecoeur with the Ginetta G57. Henk Tace and the Pumax was in third, but Max Ashoff followed him all the way through the race, both of them lapping in the low one minute 35s. Victory went to Luke de Kock and Tim Yosen, and Australia's Roman Crummins ended up on the podium in third, just three tenths of a second behind Max Ashoff, who finished as the runner up. But does the Aussie think he can do even better in the second encounter? Uh, I'm, perhaps that's my objective, yes. <laughs> we try. We try to, I see where my weaknesses are compared to him, so see how we go. We have to try. Gearbox problems meant that Matthias Becker and Javier Ibram Pardo had to settle for second in LMP3. Victory going to Jean Pierre Lecoeur and Jean Marc Uberecken. In SR3, Belgians Bart Urms and Roger Guillon took second place for the Praga R1 as Vim Uris claimed victory. And Henk Tace, the only finisher in Super GT, was the winner. Race 2 in Zolder with beautiful sunny conditions once more for the GT and Prototype Challenge. Again on pole, Tim Yosen and starting driver Luke de Kock. And track conditions again remain challenging. Super hot. Race 1 lap times around 2 seconds slower even than qualifying. Deldish Racing shares the front row with LMP3 drivers Jean-Pierre Lecoeur and Jean-Marc Oberecken. Lecoeur in the Ginetta G57 for the first stint of the 60-minute encounter. Starting third, Henk Tace with the Pumax RT. In race one, he was the first into turn one, but was then passed by the faster Deldish Racing Norma M20 FC Turbo prototype. 
Here we go at Zolder once more. Good start from the second row from Henk Tais. The Pumax using all of that Corvette V8 motor and he'll take the lead into the first corner. It's going to be too wide behind. Max Ashoff slices through in front of the black Ginetta of Jean-Pierre Lecoeur. Great start from Henk Tais, but the light and nimble prototypes behind will definitely give him plenty to think about. There's the Ligier, the red and white car, Matthias Backer in fifth position. And Henk Tais with Max Ashoff and Jean-Pierre Lecoeur up into fourth place. Goes Matthias Backer ahead of Luc de Kock in the open prototype. Battle under braking for second. The big Ginetta down the inside of the Praga R1. Jean-Pierre Lecoeur up into second place. Needs to use his horsepower to escape the Praga turbo. And Luc de Kock there dropping down the order. That's not looking good. Henk Tais. Right ahead of Jean-Pierre Lecoeur, the two big V8 engine monsters are pulling away, but if they don't preserve their tyres, they'll be dead meat later in the race. Lecoeur looking down the inside, this is for the lead, right behind the battle for third place, and it looks as though Max Ashoff is just holding on ahead of Matthias Backer. Luke de Kock crabbing in the pits, damage to the car, had a mechanical issue, but it's also been hit by Alan Berg's Praga R1 Turbo. Well, there he is, he goes to apologise. He misjudged the braking as Luke de Kock was crawling back to the pits and made contact. A quick fix and Berg's car is back on its way. I hope they can get the car fixed in time, says Luke de Kock. We need to start the bell car race. We'll just have to wait and see what we can do and try and get some testing laps in, make sure the car's OK. Battle for third, blue and yellow car, Max Ashoff. The Praga 590 versus 900 kilos of the Ligier of Matthias Backer behind, but it only has 380 horsepower compared to the 420 of the V8 engine Ligier. And it looks as though Matthias Backer is using that horsepower to good effect now. He's going to come down towards the first chicane, looking around the outside of the Praga. Praga should be able to break later, but the Ligier's got the job done up to third he goes. Matthias Backer all over the back of Henk Tais. Pit stop window almost open. And looking for third place here. Team double checking everything after problems in race one. Hancock team making sure the tyres aren't dangerously overheating in these stressful conditions for the rubber. And off goes the car. Very happy, says Matthias Backer. Car was great. Yesterday we had problems with the gearbox electronics. Had to reset the car three times to get on our way. Today, no problems though. Team done a great job. Jean-Pierre Lecoeur and Jean-Marc Uberecken are too far in front though. And that means that Henk Tais is battling for third place overall, chased by Roman Cummins. The CN class leader would get by to claim third overall at the line. LMP3 victory went to Jean-Pierre Lecoeur and Jean-Marc Ubrecken ahead of Javier Ibram Pardo and Matthias Backer. Roman Crummins winning in CN, beating Praga R1 turbo drivers Max Ashoff, Tim Gray and Alan Berg. Poor Max RC driver Henk Tace again on the top step of the podium in Super GT. On Saturday, Bart Holmes and Rodriguez Guillon finished second in SR3. It's their first weekend in the Blueberry Racing Praga R1, and in race two, they head towards their first class win, lapping quicker than anyone else. Radical driver Vim Uris took the class lead, but soon dropped back as the Praga drivers picked up the pace. The reigning champion lost two seconds a lap, no match for his compatriots. Bart Holmes happy with the improved lap times in race two, almost a second faster than on Saturday. He and Guillon very happy with their results. Ja, zeker met deze temperatuur was het heel warm in de auto en ja, we hebben een heel mooi weekend gehad. With the blistering sunshine, it gets really hot in the tiny cockpit, but we're very happy with this weekend's results. Rodriguez and I had great fun. Car was just amazing. I managed to do a one minute 36 lap, so that's amazing too. Fun weekend. Next up, round three for the GT and prototypes at Sanford. Round three for the Supercar Challenge, powered by Hankook at the Circuit of Zolder, the second visit to Belgium after the season opener at Spa, and as ever, two 60-minute races. Race one saw Pascal and Vard Slice's BMW M4 silhouette start on pole position after two DNFs at Zandvoort, eager to make up for lost ground as they've dropped to eighth in the championship standings. They led after round one at Spa. Alongside them, Villa Myers and Michael Verhagen's BMW M4 silhouette, their teammates, Chris Convalt is the best of the Porsches. They line up in third position. They've had no luck whatsoever this season. 
Alongside them, Jean de Vilda in his GT3 Cup 991, winner of one race after four starts this season. Our Supersport pole scissors are Dennis Laborst and Stan Van Oort in their Cooperips, their fourth pole of the season. They're third in the points. Rennie Steinmetz, the points leader, he'll start sixth in class. Second and third on the grid in Supersport 1 are Rude Olly and Robert and Benjamin Vandenberg's BMWs. Bar Joss claims his first pole of the season in the sport class. Championship leader and teammate Rob Neiman will line up in third. The BMW M4 silhouettes of Bas Gauten and Villemeyer headed the charge down to the first corner ahead of the best of the Porsches. But up to the Villeneuve chicane on the opening lap, John de Vilde going through to grab second place and Meyer would be behind Kuhn Walters and down in fourth before the end of the lap. Even worse problems for Dan Meyer at the end of the first lap in sixth place. The car alight as it comes across the line. Meyer pulls over the Martini Porsche and leaps out. He's OK, but the rear of the car is gutted. Top five results at the season over at Spa. Top ten results in Zandvoort, but no luck here at Zolder. The car will not make it into race two. Instead, he will join Bob Herber in the black and orange Porsche. At the restart, it's Bas Gauten from John de Vilder and Cohn Walters, Villa Myers, BMW in fourth place. John de Vilder running out wide as he didn't get his tyres back up to temperature, drops from second to fourth. GT positions are settled up to the pit stops. Cohn Walters coming in to hand over to Chris. Car back in good shape after being crashed heavily at Zandvoort. Everything was going well until 20 minutes in. Tire started to overheat. Grip was gone. I noticed the BMWs were struggling less, unfortunately. Especially look at their overall speed. We'll never be able to catch them. Bit of a shame. No result seconds for the lead BMW after disaster at Zandvoort. So Vard Slice keeps the lead. In Supersport 1, as they go green after the safety car, Rude Olly in his BMW leading from Dennis de Bors, looking back at Marcel van der Maart's orange BMW in third, Ronald van Loon in fourth, on board with Marcel van der Maart and Dennis de Bors in front, showing the problem that the Cupra has on the hot tarmac of Zolder. It's struggling with chronic understeer. The BMWs are heating their tyres more effectively across the steering axle at the front and the driven axle at the rear. Through goes Marcel van der Maart into second, Dennis de Borst struggling in third. Santa van der Slot trying to keep himself cool before taking over from Jean van der Voort in the Alfa Romeo. They end up in fourth place in the competitive sport class. Rob Neiman the leader before the pit stops with Bart Drost in second and Chris Foote in third place. Foote moving up to second but would drop back down to third because of 30 results seconds in a pit stop versus 10 for Bart Drost. Bard Slice and Bas Scouten leave their Zanfort bad luck behind them to take their second race win of the season. Every single light on the dashboard was on like a Christmas tree. Brakes, oil temperature, whatever. But over the radio they said, keep going, it'll all be fine. We made it to the finish. Yes, the team did a great job. After the troubles at Zanfort, quite a relief. Part of the deal, but I'm happy for the team to be back on the top step of the podium again. And they move from 8th to 6th in the championship with that one result, beating Converters and Chris Valders in the second, John de Vilde in third. Supersport 1, Marcel van der Maart and Peter Schroyers claim victory from Dennis de Borst and Stan van Oord Seat, and Ruud Olli in third in his BMW M3. An exhausting race for everyone, says Peter Schroyers, especially the machinery, no different for us. In the last couple of laps, the gearbox was so hot it got stuck in fourth, so all I could do was go slower and hope it finished. Fingers crossed it would be enough to keep the lead, and luckily it was. We got victory with a margin, so we're on the top step of the podium and really happy. The only survivors in Supersport 2 are championship leaders Patrick Grafreda and Roger Delo with their BMW M3. Rob Neiman claiming victory in the sport class ahead of Bart Drost with Peugeot duo Chris Foot and Bart van der Broek in third. Rob Neiman, the championship leader, extending his advantage in race one with some clever thinking. After a while, we started working out what lap times we needed to do just to stay in front and to look after the tyres. That went OK for a while, but near the end, I couldn't even keep up that speed. The brakes and tyres really suffered today. The driver was suffering too. But everything went according to plan in qualifying. OK in the race. Hopefully, if we do the same tomorrow, I'll be a very happy camper. Now, morgen nog and have a top weekend. 
Stay with us for all the action from race two of the Supercar Challenge powered by Hankook at the Circuit of Zolder. This program is powered by Hankook Tyres, autosportinsurance.com and Magla, create your own digital magazine. Round three of the Supercar Challenge powered by Hankook at the Circuit of Zolder. The second 60-minute race on Sunday in sweltering conditions once more. Air temperature 30, track temperature 42 and climbing at the start. Hot work for the grid girls, for the cars and for the drivers. 30 cars on the grid headed by Baz Scouten and Vard Slice's BMW M4 silhouette. The race won winners now up to six in the points. Alongside again teammates Michael Verhagen and Villa Myers M4 silhouette, they started second in race one but only finished in seventh after mechanical woes. Best of Porsches, Kuhn and Chris Walters, third place on the grid, their second place in race one on their home track, giving them hope for this one as well, but they'll need to keep their tyres in great nick. John de Vilder also starting fourth as he did in race one. He finished third then, but he'll look after his tyres a little better, hopefully, in the second encounter. Supersport one pole again goes to the Cooper drivers, Dennis Borst and Stan Van Oort, who struggled with understeer but still finished in second in race one. That will add 10 result seconds to their pit stops. Rudolly and Benjamin and Robert Vandenberg second and third in the class as they get ready to race once more. Ready for the start of race two, Baz Kouten on pole, pacing the field, Michael Verhagen alongside him, left to picture. Convalters with the blue nose on his Porsche in third, John de Vilders all white car in fourth place. Dennis de Borst leading the Supersport 1 class. Lights off and away we go. Porsches jinking around behind the BMW. It's all contact with Convalters on the inside there with the blue nose. And through goes John de Vilder and Vim Milders following the BMWs. Looking back from Dennis de Borst at Rudolly Pedersreus and the rest of the field in Supersport 1. Sweeping through the first couple of corners. Around the outside there, that's Martin Lansing in his GT car, but that was Rude Ollie. This is Peter Schroyers, there's Ollie in front of us. And just hidden in front is the silver and red Seat of the Supersport 1 leader, Dennis de Borst. Oh, muscling through on the inside, Jackie van der Ender rushing down to the newly renamed Thierry Boots and Chicane. The BMW's 1-2 from John Deville to Vim Mulders, red and yellow, and that is St. Cecil car retaking seventh place from Paul Sellers. All jumping over the chicane, that's not good news. Understeer from Dennis de Borst, Cupra, but he's still leading in Supersport 1. Baskout and trying to pull away in front, looking for the silver and red Seat. There it is. Battle on for second place with Jackie van der Ender pushing hard in his Seat in Supersport 1. Everybody else safely through. On board with Kuhn Valters, trying to retake some of the lost ground down the inside. Oh, and contact there. But he squeezes by Vim Mulders. And a change in front as John de Vilder has jumped past Michael Verhagen. Kuhn Valters does as well. Verhagen has gone from second to fourth right at the end of lap one. Bob Herber down the inside of Vim Mulders. And he goes through as well. So Vim Mulders losing ground. Lots of changes early on in the GT class, but they have to preserve their tyres and can't just fight regardless. Problems for Supersport 1 driver Benjamin Vandenberg. The car was losing ground right from the start. Problems mechanically, it's got a misfire. The team looking worried. And unfortunately, they won't get points. They only complete 18 laps, dropping them to fourth in the standings. Ahead of the class, Dennis de Borst from Rude Olly. Then the blue and red car of Jackie van der Ender ahead of the orange BMW of Peter Schroes. That's your change for third. René Steinmetz trying to close in from behind. Ronald Van Loon there in the blue and white BMW, ninth in Supersport 1. With Peter Schroes attacking Jackie van der Ender, who shares that Cooper in front of us with Max Fails. Dennis de Borst leading from Rude Olly. Then GT driver Jos Janssen out of place. BMW with more speed down the straight, but the Seat able to maintain it through the corners and under braking. Jackie van der Ender stays in front, then Rennie Stamets and Ted van Fleert right behind them. Another battle between Cupra and BMW. 
There is the orange car, Pair de Choice. He's got to run down the inside of Jackie van der Ender, back up into third place. Van der Ender immediately comes back at him. He's going to try and go the long way around the outside. Van der Ender, hugely experienced Dutch driver, but he's not going to get through there. Looking back, there's Van der Ender. René Steemets and Ted van Fleet closing in from behind. And Stefan Polderman in his Seat Cooper TCR. Very popular racing car in lots of championships, the Cooper. There's Van der Ende and Steinmetz gap back to Ted van Fleet. And then a little further back, Ronald van Loon trying to go by Priscilla Spellman in the White Lotus. On board with Ronald. Trying to use the power of the BMW on the run up to the Villeneuve chicane. Looks outside now, down the inside. Through he goes for eighth place. He shares with Son Luke. Priscilla Spellman with Jan van der Kooy in the Lotus. Looking back to Supersport, leader is Petri de Freire in the black BMW from Nicolas Delonc in the white and pink Peugeot 308. Then the Sport class, Chris Foot ahead of Rob Neiman, all trouble, the BMW! Oh, how did he miss the Peugeot? Petri de Freire spins out of the lead, Nicolas Delonc in the lead now of Supersport as the Sport class guys go through. Wow, that was a close one. Battle for second in GT, battle for fourth behind. White cars John de Vilder, Kuhn Walters behind him. And then in the background, Michael Verhagen under real pressure from Bob Herber. Down the straight, we could see two changes. Kuhn Walters looking for second. He'll go through top of the picture. A late lunge from Bob Herber down to, to Erster Linkser as well. Well, there is a change for second place. Kuhn Walters is through. Not sure there was going to be a change behind. No, Bob Herber still in fifth position behind the BMW silhouette. Battle for third place in the sport class. Bart Drost in the Renault Clio with the gold highlights and the red Alpha. What other colour would there be? The 147 GTA of Sandra van der Slot who shares with John van der Voort. Sandra and John didn't start round two in Zandvoort after their gearbox broke and there was no suitable replacement. So now they're eager to regain that lost ground. They're 11 points behind Bart Drost in the championship and she's got a run going on the inside. But the Renault just had enough momentum. Hangs on into the Lucian Bianchi corner, but again, look, the Alpha's got a much better run through the turn. So Bart Drost under pressure here. Just about enough speed at the top end for the Renault to creep away. The Alpha still accelerating hard. Later on the break, Sandra von der Slot down the inside. Through she goes into third place. Little Jess to say thanks for giving me racing room. Here is our battle for third place. John de Wilder just ahead of Michael Verhagen. Verhagen now starting to really push hard and Bob Herber is back in touch with them. A little behind Vim Moldes and Senk Sesikar, the Turkish driver in the yellow, black and red machine all over the back of Moldes. Really pushing hard for the pass. The Turkish driver sweeps to the inside and there's a little rub. And that leaves Moldes out of the running and down in the gravel trap. Safety car is out, and that is bad news for race leader Bas Kouten. Not great news either, it has to be said, for Finn Mulders and teammate Rick Renmans as they are rescued from the gravel. A little bit of tidying up as well. Breeze picking up. Heading back to green, there's Bas Kouten from Cohn Walters. And then the white Porsche, John de Vilde third from Michael Verhagen in the BMW and Bob Herber in the orange and black Porsche. Here we go. Now Herbert all over the back of Michael Verhagen's BMW M4 silhouette again. He's got second Cesar car behind him. Here we go down the inside for fourth place as he gets through. He does not. The BMW breaks a little later. In front, John de Vilde is third. Michael Verhagen fourth. Bob Herbert looking inside outside. And Senk Cesar car with the yellow and black highlights might pick up a spot here. And Bob Herbert couldn't find a way round. Going through slower traffic. Leader still Baskouten from Comvaltus in Supersport 1. Dennis de Borst ahead of Peter Schroyers. Looking back at Jackie van der Ender and René Steinmetz. Van der Ender in third place having a good race. He's on the inside of the orange BMW. A pair to Schroyers. There he is. You just see him on the right hand side of the screen. Schroyers using the power and traction of the rear drive car just to get his nose out of trouble. Down to the chicane, all oh, the BMW on the inside, almost contact, that was very close. Looking back, there is the BMW all over the back of the leader. 
Dennis De Borst brings the lead car into the pit lane at Ferry Monster Autosport. They got in front and kept their noses in front, expected the BMW to be quicker than the front wheel drive Seat, but once you're in front, it can be hard to pass. Slow stop though, they came in behind Luke Van Loon and his father Ronald, and they've made their change and leave in front as Stan Van Ordis urged out of the pits by Robin Monster, the former champion. Uh, yeah, had a bit of a problem finding the seat belts. So we lost a bit of time, it's a shame. Apart from that, I had a great start to the race at Dennis de Boers. I was able to build a lead, safety car threw a spanner in the works, but we managed to keep the lead to the pit stops and we're still going. Well, after the stop, Stan Van Oort is in fourth place because Ted Van Fleert and Jackie Van der Ender stay right out to the very end. With zero result seconds, it's Van der Ender and his teammate Max Fails who have the lead, Ted Van Fleert in second place. And they're in the middle of the pack of cars who've already done their pit stops. There's our Supersport 2 leader, Nicola Delonc, in the Peugeot 308 Cup car. And recovering his composure, Patrick de Freda in the BMW M3. Overall leader in GT before the stops, still by Scout and pulling away. Lap after lap from Kuhn Chris Voltus, Porsche. And Michael Verhagen under real pressure still from Bob Herber and Senk Sesikar. This is the battle for fourth place. Pit stop window now open for the GT cars. Michael Verhagen brings the car in to hand over to Willem Meyer. They've had four podiums so far this season, one race win at Sanford, not going so well here at Zolder. They lost second place on lap one of the race, having started this second race from pole as they did in race one. Yeah, actually with the uh, ziekenhuis bocht. Yeah, Adel Hospital uh, corner accelerated, but the engine yeah, stopped, had to reset the car. Lost a couple of places. All I could do is try and close the gap and stay with them. It's important to save the tyres, not to push too hard. So hopefully I've given Willem some decent tyres. He can finish the job and keep up the uh, pace. Overall, I'm pretty happy. Bob Herber brings the Porsche into the pits from fifth position, sharing with Dan Meyer. There's Dan waiting to get in. Meyer's car gutted after that fire in the first race. So his teammate sharing the car with Herber. In the restart, we held up behind a slower car. We lost the leader up to the safety car. Everything was going fine. It could stay with the leading pack, despite the second generation Porsche in front, which should have been quicker. Handed over to Dan Meyer, but we had problems with the seatbelts because they're adjusted for me and not for him. So we lost around 18 seconds. Don't think we're going to be on the podium today, I'm afraid. In comes race leader by Scouten, late pit stop to try and build a gap for his teammate Vard Slice. Dropped out of both races in Sanford, Vard Slice didn't get to drive at all. So what a difference this racing weekend might make to them. They won race one and they've got a good chance of winning race two here at Zolder as well. Same story as Saturday, gap was around six seconds and then the safety car destroyed that, had to start again, came in with a six second lead, that should be enough hopefully for Vard to keep the lead in the race. Will they hang on and what will happen in Supersport 1, 2 and the Sport class? Stay with us for all the action from Solder. This programme is powered by Hankook Tyres, autosportinsurance.com and Magla, create your own digital magazine. Race two for the Supercar Challenge, powered by Hankook at Zolder in sweltering conditions. Race one winner, Bascout, and took the lead at the start of the race and had still got a six second advantage at the pit stops despite a safety car that slashed his lead after Vim Mulders and Senk Sisikar clashed early on. After their late pit stop, Vard Slice now leading in the car he's taken over from Baskauten, the BMW M4 silhouette. Chris Walters taken over from Kuhn Walters in second, but he's stuck behind this battle. This is for six in Supersport 1, Jan van der Kooy now in the Lotus Exige and Roland de Vaart in the Lotus V6. And they nearly collide. Battle for third in GT, Willem Meyer in the BMW M4 silhouette, the red, white and blue. He's taken over from Michael Verhagen ahead of Jos Janssen. And because of result seconds scrambling the order, Dan Meyer in the black and orange car, Bob Herber, now in sixth place with John de Wilder's white car right behind him. 
And Dan Meyer might have a defensive job on his hand. Devilda qualified very strongly. He was running right at the front in the top three before the pit stops. And the result seconds dropped him down the order. So Dan Meyer in this slightly older car he's sharing now this weekend with Bob Herber after his own car was gutted by fire in race one. With plenty to do, John De Vilder down the inside, creeps himself up into the top half dozen. Last minute of the pit stop window and in comes Jackie van der Ende. He stayed out in the lead of the Supersport 1 class as long as possible to build a big advantage for his teammate. And with no result seconds, they've got a great chance. You can tell how hot the brakes are, a bit of rubber pickup there on fire. Well, it's a neat quick pit stop they retain first place Ted van Fleet was in second but lost out to Luke van Loon both with zero results seconds BMW up into second and ahead of this battle Stan van Oort, Ruud Olli, Marcel van der Maart oh, and there's Ted van Fleet mistake at the chicane and that's going to cost him he's dropped back two places as the battle is on Luke van Loon around the outside of the Seat and now it's the inside line the BMW with great traction. Now it's wheel to wheel. Stan Van Oort trying to close in, having taken over from Dennis De Borst. And suddenly problems for Max Fails. He pulls over to one side. And the car is slowing dramatically. And that is a real disaster. It was going fantastic. We knew, of course, I could lekker by the first three ride. It was going really well, says Jackie. I stayed close to the top three. The car was great. And then after the pit stop, we're in the lead. That's what we'd hoped for with our strategy. But uh, Van Loon bashed us and caused a puncture. So game over for us, I'm afraid. Lee Battle in Supersport. Luke Van Loon, despite that contact, no dramas with his car, it seems. Stan Van Oord all over the back of him, though, having taken over from Dennis to Borst. Pole position for both races. And the Seat, if it could get in front, could well stay there, but that's if it can get in front. Luke Van Loon doing stalwart work defensively into Lucien Bianchi corner. Right behind Van Oort is Rude Olly. Now he's not in third, he's actually a lap down after problems earlier on in eighth. The orange car, Marcel van der Maart, is in third. That's just a few car lengths further back. But Sam Van Oort will have to be careful that he doesn't get collected by Rude Olly. If he leaves the gap, Olly will try and unlap himself. Luke Van Loon clinging on under braking. And Stan Van Oort threw someone else's gravel. Rud Olly leapt the chicane a little bit there as he's trying to unlap himself. Luke Van Loon passed the Peugeot RCZ and Stan Van Oort squeezes in as well. Luke Van Loon trying to use traffic as much as he can. There's the orange car, Marcel van der Maart and Peter Schroyers. Now all over the back of Rud Olly and can't get by the lapped car because it's pretty much just as fast in fact the four litre gtr the uh, white and blue car of rude ollie is quicker or more powerful at least in a straight line the marcel van der Maart. so van der Maart, i'm sure feeling a little bit of frustration at the moment of course he won't lose any points being behind Rude Olly, but it means he can't get close to Stan Van Oort. However, as Rude Olly tries to unlap himself, here's a chance now for the orange car. Rude Olly unlaps himself on second place man Stan Van Oort. Did it hold up the Seat? Oh dear. Rude Olly all over the place. He either needs to get by or drop back. But of course, he doesn't want to slow down. He's gone by Stan Van Oort, and here's a chance for Peter Schroes. If he can keep it off the dust, and he can't, and he's in the gravel. Foot down, foot down, foot down, don't steer too much. He spins. Can he get out of the gravel? Yes, just about. Well, that avoids him losing the race. Problem for the set lane, Super Copa of Nick Sanderson, third in Supersport 2. Bit of a fire at the back. Nicolas Delong under pressure for the lead in Supersport 2 now from Patrick de Freda and Roger de Luz, BMW M3. The car was leading earlier on, spun out. And here is another battle. This is saint car and John de Vilde for fifth place in GT. De Vilde's all-white car, we ride on board with him. He was eighth after the stops, now looking for fifth position. Can he find a way through past the Turkish driver? I'm sure he's more familiar with the circuit than Sesikar. Catching is one thing, getting by is always difficult. Identical Porsche GT3 Cup cars. Look the way the acceleration remains the same, but he lunges late down the inside and he is up to fifth place. That's a well-taken opportunity. 
Valtai still leads from Chris Valters. But a huge battle on for third place. Jossi Anson's Porsche dive bombed by Willem Meyer in the BMW M4 silhouette. Are the Porsches now starting to run out of tyres and or brakes? The BMW M4 silhouette motoring on well. There's your race leader. Vard Slice took over from bus scouting with a six second advantage and hopefully some decent tyres and brakes to nurse him through. And trouble, Nicolas Delonc recovering from a spin in the Peugeot S. De Lynx at Ted Van Fleet also spins, just missing the barriers it looks like. He'll have to be recovered. He'll be three laps down by the time he gets to the flag. Well, that's the end of a good race for him, unfortunately. In the sport class, Sandra van der Slot handing over to John van der Voort. And after the stops, they're the leaders, but Bart Drost in the Renault Clio diving through on the inside to grab the lead of the sport class. Bart van der Broek and Chris Voort's Peugeot RCZ in third place. This is the Peugeot RCZ. This is 1-2-3 in sport, by the way, as close as this. And Bart van der Broek on the inside of John van der Voort. Van der Voort still trying to find a way to get back past Bart Drost. What a close battle there. One, two, three in the sport class, covered by a pocket handkerchief. And it is Renault Alpha Peugeot. The Peugeot again with a run down the inside. And the champions move up to second place. Yes, just ahead of John van der Voort in the Alpha 147 GTA. And he comes back on the exit of the corner. Now here is the lead battle, Bart van der Broek getting a run around the outside of Bart Drost in the Clio and he takes the lead of Sport. Inside the final few moments of the race, Super Sport 1 battle for second. The silver, red and black Seat is Stan Van Oort, the orange BMW Marcel van der Mark. Luke and Ronald Van Loon's BMW out front. Luke Van Loon leading the race, looking set for victory. But what's going to happen for the other podium places? Stan Van Oort defending hard against Marcel van der Maart. The Seat asks its front tyres to do all the work, to steer, to brake, and also to put the power down. The BMW cheats its tyres a little better. The power goes through the rear wheels. The steering and the braking predominantly through the front. So tyre wear tends to be better, particularly in these hot conditions. Trying to get a run going, but look, closing in behind is the race leader. And it looks as though Vard Slice will be going on to his last lap of the race. It is the last lap of the race now. And it moves then for this battle as well. We're with Marcel Fantomart looking for second, but he needs to watch his mirrors as well. The leader is right with him, Vard Slice, there in the background. So the orange car, Marcel van der Mark, trying to find a way by Stan van Orden, trying to find a way past both of them is Vard Slice. He can't afford to take any chances. Vard Slice past the BMW, still leading this race, but now he's got to try and go by Stan van Oort, who's trying to cling on to second in Supersport 1. So the GT class car will be quicker. Here's a chance for van der Mark then. Last lap of the race, the chequered flag is being readied. Can he follow through in the gap? He's through on the inside, is he, is he? Yes, he is. Little bit of contact, oh, handful of opposite lock. And again, another little rub, but he's through into second ahead of Stan van Oort. Chequered flag is out, Vard Slice wins the race, wins in GT and Marcel van der Mart second in Super Sport 2 behind Luke van Loon, just ahead of the Seat. Oh, breathless finish. Vard Slice and Bas Gauten claim win number three of the season. Seven seconds ahead of Kuhn and Chris Walters. So the lead they built up before the pit stops was just enough to hang on for Hagen and Willem Meyer taking third. We had a really good strategy worked out, but unfortunately that all came undone when the safety car came out. I suppose it's the same for everybody else, but after the restart, Bass brought the car in with a comfortable lead, so that still worked out okay. I think we were probably the fastest car in the race, even in my stint. Zolder's my home track, and for the others it might be more of a challenge. The car was superb again today, really good state when Bass handed it over. Tires even better than yesterday, so all in all a great weekend for us. And he's not kidding, they've jumped from 6th to 2nd after race 2, having started the weekend only 8th in the championship.
Ronald and Luke van Loon. There is Luke claiming victory in Supersport 1 ahead of Marcel van der Maart and Peter Schroyers. Stan van Oord and Dennis de Boers denied in the final couple of corners. They finish in third. Yeah, it came good. Um, Turned out to be a race without any problems, says Luke. Although we dropped back in the first part of the race, we could close the gap in a second stint. I was in a battle for third, then second, and passed the leader. Very happy. Well, we took the heat into account. It worked well for us, said Ronald. Yesterday, the tyre blew. We didn't want that to happen again, so our strategy finally paid off, and we're very happy with our result. Benny Steinmetz still hangs on to the championship lead after two fourth places in Zolder. Dennis de Borst and Stan van Oort moving up to second with two strong races. After a spin apiece, Patrick de Vreda Roger Delon beat Nicolas de Lanc in the Supersport 2 class. The BMW duo head the Peugeot driver in the points. The sport class was dramatic right to the end. Finally, Bart van der Broek and Chris Furt's Peugeot started to ease away from Bart Drost in the Renault and John van der Voort in the Alpha he shares with Sandra van der Slot. But it was a battle for supremacy all the way to the line between the second and third place duo. Bart Drost, one mistake too many, dropping out from second and allowing John van der Voort and Sandra van der Slot to finish behind Bart van der Broek and Chris Furt. As they finished on the top step of the podium, Drost recovering his composure to finish in third. Yesterday we had a problem with the setup, said Chris Foot. We had no grip and the engine power was down as well. Made some overnight changes, improved the grip, and today everything went perfectly. The engine was back on form, the grip was amazing, we took the lead, and Bart finished the race with the chequered flag. And to make it a perfect weekend, because of Rob Neiman's problems, they are now back in the championship lead. Neiman in second, ahead of Bart Drost, John van der Voort and Sandra van der Slot. So that is it for Zolder. Next time out, they're supporting the DTM at Sandfort in the middle of July. And we will bring you all the action then. Until then, from Zolder, goodbye. This program is powered by Hankook Tyres, autosportinsurance.com and Magla, create your own digital magazine.